Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Because there's only one you, Views Alto is the vape as unique as you are. With Views by You, you can make your unique mix with any of four colors, three flavors, three nicotine levels, and infinite wrap designs. So how will you do you? Make Views Alto a vape that is yours in store now. Discover more at Views.com. Views. Charge beyond. Vapor products. Underage sale prohibited. Website and offers restricted to age 21 and over tobacco consumers. Hanging in the pool, there's a fucking orgy going on in the pool. Gotta clean the pool. Yeah. If the movie has any redeeming quality whatsoever, it's this fucking rope. Crapolet. 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 This whole story yes. is crapolet. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of What the Suck. My name is James, and with me always is my awesome co-host, Mr. Chris. What's going on, brother? Man, it's all good. What's going on with you? This movie was kind of fun. It was not bad. We have episode 11 today, and we are going to be doing... I have to do it. Flavor Flaves! <laughs> Shit. His Night Tales. Well, that's, it's tied to him, but that's about all there is to it. His name that's is on the it. box, and that's it. Yeah. He doesn't... I guess he, he might have fronted some cash or something in the background. I don't know. I, I doubt it. But today's movie is 2007's Dead Tone. The synopsis reads as such. A party, a prank phone call, and a lunatic on the other end of the line. Yeah. Based on a true story, which is a big plus for me, a couple of harmless prank phone calls turns into a nightmare when a group of college friends, of course they're college friends, dial a madman. The group becomes trapped in a horrifying game of survival against a monster hell-bent on killing more than their night of partying. Once the phone line gets dead... Oh, damn it. Once the phone... Yep. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) 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 Once the phone line goes dead, it's too late to escape and the fun and games this maniac has in mind. What? (laughs) That doesn't make any freaking sense. Either that or I read it wrong. Who gives a shit? Let's roll on about it. Let's keep going. All right. Hey, we got to have have some for the garbage reel anyway. Look, Flavor Flav is barely in this. Who else is barely in this? Who else is barely in this? Well, first of all, we'll start with the people responsible for this masterpiece of bullshit. (laughs) It's directed by Dion Taylor and Brian Hooks. It is produced by Brian Hooks and Dion Taylor. See, here we go down that trail again. And and Lisa Diane Washington. It is also written by Brian Hooks, Dion Taylor, and Vashon Nutt. (laughs) Hey, I'm just reading what it says, man. And unfortunately, it looks like this fool is in the motherfucker. We got Brian, st- starring Brian Hooks, Judy Taylor, Antoine Tanner, Sherry Johnson, Will Hornell, Jonathan Chase, Amy Garcia, who many will recognize as the awesome Detective Lopez, the forensic scientist on the show Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And she looks good in this motherfucker. I'm really, that's right now. Uh, <laughs> And then a host of other motherfuckers that, you know, don't really matter except, except, and they have him at the bottom, but that's okay because he's only in the movie for about 10 minutes any damn way, is Mr. Rutger, Captain Naval Power. Because, <laughs> I mean, I always, that's that's my number one role. I always remember that. Either that or he's that fucked up lunatic in The Hitchhiker. Man, what a bad oh, yeah. movie that was. Yeah, I see, but you'll never hear the hitchhiker on this show. <laughs> no, no, not at all. There is music in it by Vincent Gillows. 
Cinematography by Philip Lee and edited by Lane Baker. Production company is Hooks and Taylor Entertainment. Distributed by Code Black Entertainment and Screen Media Films. Release date of May 16th of 27... 2017. Look at me. May 16th, 2007. With a budget of $3 million, which I was talking to you earlier. I think 2.5 of that probably went in, in Rutgers' pocket. I disagree. I think one million <laughs> went to Rutger. One million went to Flavor Flavor. His ass showed for ten fuck or ten fucking <laughs> seconds, and then the other million went to the rest of the film. But there's like thirty motherfuckers, so they didn't get paid very much. I guess who knows? No, they're they're all C level actors and actresses. Yep. Well, anyway, I thought it was pretty decent. What do you say we get into this review, man? Well, um, why don't you give the folks at home a quick little synopsis of the re- uh, the review scale that we use, or the review? Uh... Ah, I guess you know what it is time for a refresher. I guess yeah, it's let's been do a it, while. Man. Do it. All right. Well, anyway, we rate all of our movies on a turd emoji scale, and in, and we also invert that scale, meaning one is your better ones, and five is your complete shit. One of the ones you're gonna want to keep in your queue. You're gonna watch them over and over. These are the ones you'll get endless enjoyment out of them. Two. Two are still pretty damn good, but you're going to want to drink a little bit, probably have drinking games with your buddies and stuff like that, and you'll pull them out on special occasions. Number three, you're going to drink a lot heavier. It starts to get a little bit, it starts to get a little rough at this point. Uh, four turds, you know, hit, you know, drink a whole damn bottle because <laughs> it's, it's getting serious at this point. Those are the ones, you know, you, if you got in-laws over and stuff like that, you want to run people out of the house, shit like that. Uh, and then you got five, the Fika Della Matter, top of the shit heap, the golden five turds, man. That one is like, watch it once and forget it. Because, you know, like I said, we always want everybody to watch the movies we review. Uh, but if you get a five turd, that's one, you know, you get done. If you're not drunk enough and passed out, you need to wander out in traffic, get hit by a bus, uh, you know, fall down an elevator shaft, dive off a balcony, something. Hit your head real hard, knock it out your memory, or smoke that golden blunt full of skunk and just toast your brain. Something. Nice. Gots to get rid of it. Yes. All right. That being Perfect. said, awesome. hell awesome. yeah, man. Hell yeah. So what do you say we get on and roll on into this thing? All right. Let's do it. Let's watch this bitch. Seventy-five. Here are the rules. You have 75 seconds to trick the person on the other end of the line into believing what you're pitching is absolutely real. If they hang up, you lose. If they laugh, you lose. Or if they simply not buying the bull that you're pitching, you lose. Alright, now who wants to go first? I'm coming to kill you. <laughs> Not if I find you first. Why's the phone ringing? It's probably nothing. We get disconnected. Did you hear something? was discovered early this morning murdered with a large weapon thought to be an axe every second is another chance to die what is your game Holy shit. Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) 
<laughs> Chris wasn't lying. That motherfucker's in this movie for literally like 10 seconds. He he was in it actually. <laughs> okay, I'm surprised. He was in it less than Eric Roberts was in The Summoning, and he wasn't in that motherfucker at all, really. <laughs> the Summoning. Another, another lovely piece of shit. Okay, oh yeah, also, uh, I do want to preface this by saying we are not going to be using the kill count in this one because it's there too are massive. too many motherfuckers. Now, not only that, but we, we've made it quite clear on this show many times that, um, and actually, maybe we didn't do it at the beginning, but we we did it starting, I think, a little, maybe middle of last season, if not this season for sure, that we don't count kills off screen. No, we do not. Absolutely not. They don't count. as bullshit. Pisses us off. If you're going to kill somebody in the movie, give them some screen time doing it, damn it. That's right. It's it's a cheap way to get to get out of doing special effects and practical effects and CGI effects. It's bullshit. So we only count the ones that are on screen. This movie has a has over 15 or so kills, but of those only 3, 2 or 3 are on screen, so we're just going to count those from the beginning. Well, that's yeah, actually not beginning. too bad, but then we're going to roll with it. All right. Well, anybody knows kids, you know, are assholes and they all, you know, you get warn your kid off about this when he gets older. We open up with a bunch of little shit bags in there. Wait, wait, with... wait, 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 wait. <laughs> are we, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are we going to skip past the 10 seconds of bullshit of Flavor Flav on the screen beforehand when he, quote unquote, introduces the movie? Yes. Okay, no. <laughs> no. Because this shit. Okay, he comes on screen with uh... a broke ass, a broke ass Dracula, right? <laughs> He's got these horrible eyebrows, right? And he's uh, they they couldn't even get him on a set. He's he's on a he's in a I, warehouse against the green screen. He's probably in his screen. garage or some shit. They just come by. Probably in his garage, yeah. <laughs> and he he walks up, and then they use cheap effects to make him disappear, reappear. And then he comes in. And he says, "I'm Flavor Flav. I'm first of all his okay. You know, you have like the Crypt Keeper. You have uh what's his name Rod Serling for Twilight Zone. You know, you have." Yeah. Um, all, all, uh, what was the oh other one you God. mentioned? Um, who was the other guy that uh, also hosted a, a show a while back? You mentioned him. Oh, Jack Palance. Jack Palance. Yeah. Yeah, with the Ripley's. You know, yeah. Yeah. They, they, these people are hosts for for a reason, and and, and they have names. The Flavor Flav's names is it, name is the Timekeeper, which makes no sense as to why his <laughs> he's the Timekeeper of a series called Night Tales. That makes no fucking sense. Anyway, he doesn't talk about the movie. He doesn't mention the movie's name. He just walks on, says, welcome to Night Tales, and then he walks back and disappears, and that's it. He made his million dollars for 10 seconds of some bullshit. Yes. Okay. Well now done, sir. Well Thank done. <laughs> I left my chest. See, that I wasn't pissed gonna me off him, so bad. I wasn't going to give him screen time. Fuck him. That pissed him off. That pissed me off so bad, but go on, continue. <laughs> Fight the power, brother. All right, here we go. Movie opens up, like I said, before I was corrected by my co-host you interrupted. <laughs> hey <laughs> it's all good man with a bunch of little shitheads in a room and they're making crank calls playing Terrible a game crank calls yep playing a game that they call 75 which means you have to get somebody on the phone and try to keep them on the phone for 75 seconds make them believe whatever the bullshit is you're saying and be, and be you know if they hang up you lose big deal there's nothing to win nothing to lose and apparently these little bastards dial the wrong damn house. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, if anybody knows the old Star 69 or anything like that, well, they didn't use their shielding, which we'll get into later. There's a yeah. way to shield that shit. Well, what happens is this killer tracks these bozos to their house, mm-hmm. shows up, and, I mean, all the parents are in the other room. These kids are all piled up in this room sleeping. All the parents are in another room getting plastered. Yeah. It's, it's get, looking like a damn key party in there. So what's awesome is four minutes into this thing, we get two sweet-ass kills. I mean, good kills. They come in there. They come in there, and the murderer busts through the front door. And you're like, what in the hell? And he's coming straight at this kid. Because this kid's looking at him. is like, holy shit. And what happens? The dad steps out in front and takes an axe right to the head. Fucking cool. Love no, but it. you don't see it. You it's see off the, screen. You see blood splatters and shit. You, you see, see blood. That don't fucking count. You don't <laughs> see his head get caved. So you have no idea if he gets hit in the head but, or not or gets hit in the head. But what I liked about it. this, but did, what I did like about this, is, shut the fuck up. What I did, <laughs> <laughs> you're, right, you're right, though. Yeah, the on-screen stuff was a little little scarce. But the uh, the part I really liked about this opening scene was the realism 
of the screams of the mother. Because when she came in there to try to deflect this guy, he mm-hmm. hacks the living shit out of her. And the screams and shit that she's letting out was actually kind of blood curdling. I mean, it was actually not so bad. But as things always happen, you know, everybody's dead. It flashes into another scene and end walks. Well, hold on. I want to talk about the scene a bit more because this scene pissed me off a lot. This, <laughs> this scene did not set a good tone for me when I started. And I was like, I we are in for a wall of hurt. Okay. Yep. A couple things. One, the kids are the kids are there in a circle making these phone calls. Not once are we given a single kid's fucking name. We have no idea what these kids are named at all. Cause nobody nope. says any of their names or nothing. We have no introduction to them. And we're not going to do it during the movie either. No. <laughs> Two. <laughs> or during the review, killer, should I say. Go when ahead. the killer goes on his spree to kill the parents, it's all a bunch of quick cuts and, and flashes and grainy grainy film. And you don't see anybody actually get hit, killed or anything. It just, you just, it, it's real, it's badly done. You can't see any of the kills. It's it's quick cuts and I hate it. I hate that shit. Damn, you, you, you hard. Third. Fucking damn. Third. I hate <laughs> shitty sound design. Okay, there's two, maybe I think one, at least one shitty sound design that happens during this scene. Okay, <clears throat> when the when the killer's done killing the parents, apparently, he goes into the kids' room to find the kids. They're all under the bed or in the closet. And there's a scene where after he goes in, for some reason, he drops the axe to the floor and he's dragging it by the hook, by the by the handle. Okay, <laughs> the floor is... is carpeted. This floor is carpeted, but when we see him dragging the axe by the handle somehow the head is making a metallic scraping sound on the goddamn carpet yeah. <laughs> and i'm like what the f- what the f- uh, Who, what dumb fuck thought that was a good idea to do that third of all when the, the mom comes like you said the mom comes in right before he's about to kill a kid knocks him down he ends up strangling the mom to death and then he just fucking leaves all the kids are still alive he well, doesn't the cops even show decide. up well, see, the cops show up. That's why somebody had called the cops, and they, he heard the siren coming, so he bolted. But oh, okay, maybe they that's never what it was. But they never caught his ass, so he took off. Yeah, so killer but on also, the loose. Before you flash forward, we're also given a scene at which Rutger Hauer shows up um, with the other cops, and they're there looking at the scene, and this whole room's covered in blood. There are a couple of cool special effects on one of the victims they show who's got. Uh, hatchet marks to her face. Looks yeah, cool. Mama. Mama took some hatchet marks to the face. Yep. What I don't understand is why in this scene Rutger Hauer is profusely sweating. He looks like he just ran a goddamn mile. <laughs> he got sweat dripping down. His hair is all wet. Did he? Did he just get out of the shower before that take and refuse hey, to look, dry off or, or what? Hey, well, look at here. Just give him a break because at least no. he, he snapped that wolf curse thing that he was stuck with all them years. Oh, you know, God. so okay. So maybe he just like, changed ten, ten, or something. I don't know. Shit. Anyway, those, those are my gripes with that scene. <laughs> Didn't set the tone for me for a good movie, but we're going ten years later. Go ahead, take it from here, James. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Ten year later, bullshit. That was my next note. It's like all of a sudden, yeah, here we go. Flash year. forward, and mm-hmm. what the hell are we treated to? Uh, this movie again, it, it's unfortunately a ripoff of several different movies in parts, mm-hmm. mainly for me, Scream, because of the whole mm-hmm. phone thing. So what's happening here? We got one of these kids apparently had grown up. See what happens? Is we, we, we accelerate, of course, and all these kids are now grown. They're all college age now, but mm-hmm. one disconnected character. I don't know what the fuck he had to do with anything because he didn't show up before. He didn't show up after. He didn't establish who the hell he even was. So here's and here's the problem with this movie because we don't know the names of the kids. We don't know. We don't know who they are as adults. There is a a, a short one line after this guy's killed. That mentions that he was one of the kids at that massacre. Yep. Well, Which anyway, kid? We don't fucking know. We but don't he was know. a kid that was there. And don't care. Because when we're introduced nope. to this motherfucker, he's loping the mule, spanking the monkey, greasing the weasel, call it what you will. Firing off the knuckle he, children. And he gets a call out of nowhere from somebody saying, I'm, I'm watching your ass. He gets up all paranoid. He's staring around. Who the hell's watching me do my shit? Well, he gets whacked. Bam. Mm-hmm. Guy comes in, finishes him off. Boom, done. And off screen. He didn't even get to finish, man. He got killed with a rock hard dick. Didn't even get yeah, to he, finish. Yeah, because he was. Blue balls. Yeah, because that's right. He was watching one of those damn things online and damn porn camera shit. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is, I noticed about this. This is 2007. Who the fuck had landlines in 2007? Anybody you know of? 
Not that I know of, no. They're but pretty then again, fucking rare, but then again, you need a landline for some shit like this because it just doesn't quite have the same effect with a cell phone. Right, and he he's kind of white trash. I mean, he's a he's a bus driver, so. Um, <laughs> but but before he gets killed, the first call he gets is from the main character playing the game seventy five on him. <laughs> and you know what? With the voice and everything, I originally thought it was Naval, but it wasn't. No, I won't spoil it, but yet. it wasn't him. No. But then we propel forward, of course, to a party. A terrible party. A very terrible party. And it's just, it's, it's senseless. But anyway, this kind of introduces you to the group of assholes that mm-hmm. are going to be lined up and chopped into, sh- you know, chopped into mincemeat later. So right. Apparently so what just, is... Just fast forward. To like yeah. fucking, I mean, yeah, that's what basically, I say. yeah, go ahead. The funniest thing about this whole first, you know, hour was the fact that they go to that fucked up gas station, <laughs> got the little kid with the wolf mask on and the pretty mouth hillbilly. I mean, that's, I mean, the, the, you got a pretty mouth and all that. That's a rip off line from deliverance. If anybody's ever seen that Yeah. Uh, and the shitty toilet scene, but that's it. That's but I mean, fun. just lay the basic information. So this group of group of kids is going to yeah. this party at this house in the middle of nowhere. It's we've heard it a million times before. It's the same fucking scenario. That's ex- couldn't have said it better myself. And it's the, obviously the richest boy in the party. I think his name is Brandon, if I can't remember, because they bitched at him enough. So they show up and they're in this huge ass fucking mansion, which is pretty damn cool. You know, mm-hmm. it's nice. Everybody's partying. The house is already full of assholes. Let, let's also not forget the fact that. Um, one of the characters, I, I'm actually going to look up the name of the characters because uh, I'll tell you about that in a sec. But um, okay. so the character of Roxy is played by Cherie Johnson. She was Punky Booster's friend on the Punky Booster show back in the day. Oh, because mm-hmm. I, you know, I recognize some faces, but it's hard to. Yep. That's all. That's her all grown up. So the group of friends is Kareem, Marcus, uh, Scott, Karina. Jody, played by Amy Garcia, Roxy, Sheree Johnson, and then Brandon. So they go off to a party at Brandon's house. Now, this whole this whole part from the beginning through the, the road trip, and, it, and, and mixed into that, you get glimpses of Rutger Howard investigating the killing of the bus driver dude, yep. realizing that it's probably the same killer who did the killings 10 years ago. And yeah, so he's, a, a he's meat, going on interviewing a meat, people. A meat slapping bus driver. See, I forgot yeah. about that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he and he drives kids around. I, I, that's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we're introduced to that. And so then all all this is is boring as shit. Even when they get to the party, it's still kind of boring. The acting at this point isn't that good either. I want to say that. And then when we get to the party, we're introduced to, um. I guess it's a friend or something who's like this version, this movie's version of Jonah Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The nerd, the fat yep, nerd. The fat already, nerd, yeah. Already kicked the part, already picked, and that's a good analogy, man. He looks damn near just like him. It's and he's already Jonah he, Hill. They show up, he's already got the party in full effect. And then we get, <laughs> you know, right before they show up, though, they get stopped right at the gate of their house. And, oh, yeah. rich, and rich boy flexes his my daddy this and my daddy that and screws with the cop and they leave never to be seen again um uh, mm-hmm. so it's like what the hell is the point they should have just drove in and went it was it's there were a lot yeah, of was... wasted moments in this movie yeah. at least early on so they get I do to party the, uh, the the crazy kid the fat kid crazy cow is his name yep when you when you first meet him he's wearing like a hawaiian shirt glasses <laughs> And, and a cargo hat. He looks like Chunk grown up. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. But what's Just funny like about it, Chunk. but then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to skip through all the typical party crap, the drugs, the, the beer chugging, the showing off and all the bullshit. And so far up to this point, it's been 45 minutes in with all these teenagers or all these college kids, so to say. And there still are no mm. RTs, man. I'm disappointed nope. at this point. So at one point during the uh, so okay so we're also introduced to the, the fact that this whole house is is lined with cameras because according to Brandon, his dad had the idea for the, a real world type um, show before MTV did, 
Yes. So he built his house and had it lined <laughs> with cameras to do this show. And then since it didn't, since MTV stole the show, uh, he just left the cameras where they were. So this whole house is, is wired for cameras. Um, and so uh, Crazy Cal is showing him around the house. They come upon a couple in like this weird room fucking whatever. And <laughs> they do. They just walk in, the dude's smiling like, hey, what's up? Yeah. And at one point they decide, um, bec- <laughs> this, this thing is also a noise shit on me. So the party is a typical college party. But for some reason, these college kids all go along with the fact that this one dude wants to play 75 because yep. that's a game all college kids want to play. They want to stop their drinking and, and drugging. And, and instead, they want to play a, a fucking game they play when they were eight years old. Now, here's an important fact I need to interject. When they start sure. playing this game, at this point, technology advanced to the point to where you can block your number from being seen by the other line. So they told everybody... Before mm-hmm. you call somebody and mess with them, you have to hit star six, seven, which will bl- block your number. All right? right. And what was pretty cool is these little sick fucks came up with some pretty good ideas of what they were talking about. I, I mean, it was, yes. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. They were talking about, no. you know, you, you have to see it to believe it. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But, but. There's always a but. One dumbass. Who does come into focus later? And this one, I believe, is named Scott. Scott yes. is Scott was the fuck up. Mm-hmm. He made his phone call, but didn't dial star sixty seven. Nope. So this ingenious motherfucker gives their position away because what happens later during Fuckfest two thousand seven, as I call it, because everybody in the house, of course, departs to their corners and everybody starts fucking. Mm-hmm. But the phone keeps ringing because right. the guy called back a few times and then they were arguing, and threatening and all this shit. So they hung up, but the phone keeps ringing. Everybody's ignoring it. Finally, Bimbo, as I call her, Bimbo Barbie, I don't even know which one of the characters she is, answers it and just fucks it up for everybody by That's giving Karina. out the address. Karina, yes, because she, the guy on the line says, hey, I'm the pizza guy. I need the address so I can drop out the pizza. Well, see, what's stupid is nobody makes pizza without an address first. So she didn't bite to that. They looked around. There were already half-eaten pizzas everywhere. So they're like, oh, shit. Now the motherfucker knows where they are. So it's pretty stupid. So now, yeah. now, finally, finally, at 57 minutes. Let's not forget the fact that the that the guy that Scott called actually apparently was in the middle of a murder and was actually committing the murder on the phone, which... Is why he yeah. decided to keep hounding them because he wanted to play a game with them. Thank you once again, sir. Yeah. So you're right. So at 57... 57 minutes, Bimbo Barbie, who screwed it up for everybody. No. Sorry. 50... Is it right at 57? Right about 57, yep. She walks in. Uh, what happens is the, is the guy, the quote-unquote axe-wielding pizza man, rings the doorbell and she goes to answer it. Oh, I'm I, sorry. And that. Okay, so that yeah. wasn't Karina. That, that's not Karina. That's a different bimbo Barbie. Who cares at this point? Because it's, <laughs> it's awesome because she walks yeah. up there and whammo. She opens the door and not even a second later, her head gets taken off by an axe, man, for a number. On what was that? screen. That was on Full screen. On. Yeah, it was so. glorious. And at that point, we, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going to count it. We're going to count it as oh, yeah. kill one. Yes. And I just got to say, I was pleasantly surprised at that i yep. had to re i had to rewind it because at this point <laughs> I'm, I'm not expecting anything to happen at this point because nothing has happened so far it's boring as shit it all is the kills have been off screen so i i actually turned turned away just that just that second when it happened so i had to rewind it to watch it again and when i saw it i was like oh my god that's glorious and then like you know you see the killer in his full outfit which he's wearing like this uh huge like snowsuit with yep. like some leather covers on the front, and then he's got his uh, fur-lined uh, hood up, and he's got like a, a ski mask. So you can't see any part of him. And I was like, okay, he looks pretty generic, but that first kill was fan fucking tastic. Yes, it was. Yeah. Th- then we proceed until, I mean, at this point, everything starts to kick into high gear because right, I mean, soon after that, at fifty-seven or at uh, fifty-eight minutes and fifteen seconds. And so what happens is there's another girl who's uh, hanging out with two guys on the couch near the, the front door. She walks over the front door, sees the girl dead, screams, runs past them, screaming, this girl's dead. 
the two dudes are like stoned or something. They're laughing at her. And she runs in the kitchen to hide. That's and right. He, he breaks through the glass, chases one of them down, kills him off screen, which sucks. And then the other one runs into the kitchen where the girl ran as well. And he takes an axe to the chest. So he takes out, yeah, he takes out the two jokers on the couch like really, really fast. Well, no, he doesn't take an axe to the chest. That's the first dude, but you see it off screen. Yeah. The second dude that he, he in the kitchen, somehow he like fucking like is stepping. He he finds him, steps on his neck to the point where he like passes out. It's like he crushes then, him. Yeah, he's like crushes his throat and shit. And then he, he just flips him over and then starts to really hack at him, his torso. But it's all off screen. You don't see any of it. Yep. And what's also cool is. Switching to Geico is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, Geico makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, Geico has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to Geico. It's obviously a good idea. While this bastard's hiding, he's cutting up the cupboards because he hears that girl hiding in the cupboard. So he starts chopping doors and stuff. And he gets down, of course, to the very last one. And then right before he chops that one, he hears the guy on the floor moving again. Right. So he snags his sorry ass, fucks him up, and does like a suplex move, throws this bitch up on the top of that damn uh, island in the kitchen, and just mm-hmm. hacks the fuck out of him. For... Yeah. No, that, that, that's off screen. We're not going to count that fucking no, shit. No, he's off chopping screen. his ass. He's chopping you his ass on the screen, fool. But you don't see any of it. It's all off screen. We're not counting that goddamn shit. <laughs> We now, I will say about, we arguing about kill count. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Now, what I will say is, okay, so at, at some point, after he finishes chopping that dude up, he sees a couple in in uh, a hot tub, and he goes to leave. Right. Yep. As he's leaving, the lady that's hiding in in the in the counter still. You think? She, oh, she's gonna make it. She's gonna make she it. Ta- she she but does she make a, it, Chris? Does she make well, it? I'm about to fucking get there. She <laughs> takes. <laughs> She takes a, a, a soft sigh, like a breath, okay? Big mistake. But his, this is what pisses me off. This, this pisses me off. Again, again, the fucking sound thing. You, I, you barely hear it on the TV. This dude who's probably six feet from the counter, who's wearing a ski mask and a hoodie <laughs> with and fur over his head. Big Arctic coat, yeah. Somehow hears her very quiet, quiet sigh. Through the cabinet and through all the shit that he's wearing, somehow he fucking hears it like he has, like he's superhuman. Well, he hears this shit and turns around and 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 and, st- and, and hacks her through the door. That makes no goddamn sense because I, you know, I know when you're wearing a big ass coat and you have the hoodie over, you barely hear shit. Now look at this. No, I want you to observe this bitch. Look at one hour straight up. He he hacks the fuck out of that dude, and you can see it on screen. He's got him up there like a side of beef. <laughs> But he he's standing in front of him, blocking him. Uh, you don't see shit flying out. Man, I'm not counting you are hard. Thing. You are hard to please, brother. But I am. But, what, but what's funny about this? Like you said, yeah. He hears her sigh, and then she's walking away. And then all of a sudden, he just dashes for that door, hacks through the door about six or seven times, mm-hmm. and then she just her dead ass just drops out of the door. Yep. That counts because <laughs> no, it doesn't fucking oh, count. You're not gonna count that way either. No, no, the I'm not counting that either. No. Because, you know, we are going to count the next one, though, because the next one was pretty badass, okay? So he heads out to the, 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 the jacuzzi where the guy and the girl are out there making out, okay? She decides she's going to go down on him and, and show him how long he can she can hold his breath, her breath. She goes down on him, comes back up, and then she goes back down again. He, he's, uh, he's, he's got his head back and join it. And on screen, in one go, you see this motherfucker get his head chopped clean the fuck off. And she's still underwater. Yeah, four. Kill two. That, I mean, it doesn't cut away. 
It doesn't change angles. It's just smack. The whole fucking head comes out. It's awesome. It, yeah, it's like, fan, it's fucking great, dude. That axe is freaking awesome, man. I like this thing because it yeah. takes it off clean too. And I was gonna want to, want to talk about that. I like. I, I mean, I like the design of the killer's outfit, but I like the design <laughs> of the axe because. It's one huge piece of steel yes. with like wooden handles around it. And yep. so you see the, the you see the ha- the axe go all the way through the the handle and it just looks bad and it's it's not even like a straight axe it like the head kind of curves a bit like the neck curves off a bit and so it's got this weird angle to it. Yeah, it's almost like a medieval axe, like a battle axe yeah. kind of thing, man. It's 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 freaking awesome. Big It's really blade. fucking cool. Yep. Yeah. So then then okay, so this to me personally after Kill 2, this is where the movie gets good to me. This yes. is where, to me, I feel like this is where all the actors and actresses uh, got a whole lot better. Yeah. The reactions are better. That's the, what we were the, talking about that when we, when we were previewing it together. We were talking about it before we started recording is the fact that they started out with some killing and then we mm-hmm. had an hour of drought. And that sucks. I hate when a movie does that. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't need all the party shit in between. You know, condense that shit and get to the killing, man. Mm-hmm. Get to the kid. You could have shaved 15, 20, 30 minutes off this movie easy, you right. know, because it's an hour and 40 minutes long, man. You could have knocked some time off of it. I know. You it know, was fucking long. and just get to the killing because that's what people want to see. Nobody cares about establishing characters and what do they call it? Character development. Nobody cares. Kill that motherfucker. That's what you Especially want. Especially not, not in these movies. In good movies, you care about it, but not in, not in these yeah. movies. You don't care about that shit. But and here's here a, on here's out, a the, quick, the characters here's a, are great. Yes, indeed. But I'm going to give a quick tip to anybody swimming. If you hear a noise in the bushes, pay attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> just pay attention to it. Because. Even if it's not a fucking killer, it might be a giant ass raccoon coming to get you. So. You never know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I will say this: I was I was um, pleasantly surprised that the only ones in the whole movie, but at one minute and seven seconds after the pool killings, nothing really happens there, and these people are walking around the house, and they get startled by these two people running out of the room, and I get my rescue titties at one you minute. Do. At one hour and seven minutes, man. They come trotting down the hallway, and they're it's gone. real quick. So, But at this point, things start to pick up, so it didn't mm-hmm. really need rescuing. Those should have been out there like at 30 minutes, you know, 40 yeah. minutes, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Give you something to string you along. No, they got to yeah. torture you with all this bullshit. After the RTs, they go sprinting down the hallway, wondering what the hell's going on. The killer comes out of the dark at him and it's around the corner and chases them all into this safe room. I guess it appears to be. It's like the master bedroom of the house or some shit. But this motherfucker has these iron goddamn doors on it. So it's like, holy shit. Because he starts check, you know, he starts hacking at it and all you hear is kaplong, kaplong. So we have this collection of assholes trying to figure out what to do with themselves now, stuck in this room. So they try to grow half a brain and decide to go find this axe-wielding fool. Which is stupid. If you're in a safe room, why isn't anybody called the cops? You know, no, no, nobody's thinking here, you know. And uh, it's so stupid. Okay, and there's one interesting part I forgot to say. While they're chasing this stuff around anyway, uh, Kareem, I think like the number two character in the movie, at yeah. one point you see something approaching them while they're running. This this isn't a kill scene. You thought somebody was coming after him, but he actually turns around and gets the jump on him, turns around and decks this fool, knocks this motherfucker clean out, which turns out to be uh, Scott, mm-hmm. the guy the guy who made the bullshit call and pissed him right. off in the first place. So he actually punched him. Whether he did it on purpose or not, I have no idea. But <laughs> this start this is where shit starts to rev up because once the mm-hmm. once they get in the room and they get out there and they try to grow a brain, try to get brave and try to go after this is when bodies start dropping left and right. This is what I like. Because I think by the time the slaughter was over, we had like fifteen damn kills. I mean, there was a lot of dead people. I mean yeah, unfortunately, all, unfortunately after the second head chopping, everything else was off screen. Well, pretty much. Come on now. You can be a little rough on this bitch. <laughs> I am, god damn it. Look, I'm 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 not fucking waving from this off screen goddamn bullshit, man. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> but we got kill number ten, which is our boy Brandon. You know, he comes out, he's in the kitchen, you know, they're running around. He's the one that takes the next chop. Because I'm just gonna start getting to the kills because this is gonna run too damn long and I don't wanna do that. Because like I said, it's an hour and forty minute movie. Yeah. He he takes an axe to the back. 
Remember, he's against the cupboard. That's he, right. Okay, so we teeth. will go ahead because that was on screen. We'll give we'll give him kill three. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty legit. And that he, was legit. I, he yeah. took a good axe to the back. He fell down. He had the car keys in his hand, so he was going to try to. That's right. He was trying to go get the car. Go get his but, car. But I do want to say he also tried to fight the the killer as well. He did. It didn't last yeah. very long. <laughs> no, but he tried. Of course, but what's Most funny time is don't don't try. Yeah, but see, this motherfucker's like retard strong. I mean, seriously. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's like he's Michael superhuman. Myers strong. I mean, this guy's mm-hmm. grabbing people and holding them up by the neck and all kinds of crazy shit. Okay, now that all these fools have done scattered and run around, they're all in the house. It's, let's split up. That's that's always a good move. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we come back to Kareem, who is holding, uh, I believe you said her name was... Roxy. Roxy. And apparently she'd been hacked up off screen, of course. Um, and then the cutesy one, the one, the detective Lopez, she dives into a fucking, uh, a, room. a little safe room and yeah. the little, and then the little red light comes on. I'm like, okay, now that nobody's going to be able to tell you're in there. Right. She, she ends up getting killed off screen. I yep. mean, we see her dead. I'm not just going to get to it now. So people start dropping like flies. And then we got our boy Jonah Hill. He's going to go out and try to get in the car and get everybody yep. out of there. He takes the keys out of Brandon's dead hands and goes outside, tries to get in the car. Killer in the car, takes his head and smashes his ass against the steering wheel several times, crushing his skull for... Also, also punching him a bunch of times for... Yes. Kill four. Legit kill four. Now, yeah. like I said, folks, there's a lot more killing in this movie. Bodies are dropping, but you don't get to see all of them, which is unfortunate yeah. because the kills Bullshit. we do see are not that bad. All right, after Nerd Boy has his skull crushed, Killer comes inside the house and... The two brothers are standing there, Kareem and the other guy. I can't remember his name. but oh, Hang on. Kareem and, uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, Marcus. Kareem and Marcus. They decide they're going to take this motherfucker on. This is when we find out how, what I call retard strong, man, because they attack his ass. They gang up on him both, and this dude is just manhandling the shit out of these guys. He yeah. grabs Kareem by the throat. The other guy hits him with a chair. It don't phase him. Man, they'd start whooping up on this dude. It doesn't matter. Cause when they well, it's, t- it, it's a pretty great fight scene. Um, it is. It's, it's quite a few minutes long. Uh, Kareem is able to to taunt the killer into fighting him like a man, which means not to use his axe. Yep. So they end up fighting hand-to-hand, the two of them. And it goes on for a bit. And it's actually, I mean, I like it because not often do you see a film where a character or two actually fight the killer. in... Fights Abs- a killer. Absolutely. And they're beating his ass. And then out of nowhere comes Scott, who's in the mm-hmm. day still from being knocked the fuck out. So well, he, he here's my other problem with this is that the whole time they're fighting, like whole time Kareem's fighting him, he told him to fight him like a man. So the axe is on the floor. Marcus could have picked up that axe and yes. drove into the back of the killer's back. That's the part that frustrated me. But he didn't but do it's, it. <laughs> instead, now, I will say this. Instead, they, got, they finally get him pinned to the ground. And Mark, uh, Kareem... In the badass that he is, is stabbing the shit out of the dude's leg he with this is. knife that he has. He's I mean, just the fuck out of this blow dude. after blow after <laughs> blow after blow. But unfortunate, that leaves Scott coming out looking all scared and shit to grab the axe, and they keep yelling at him, "Grab the axe, get him, get him, get him!" But then they're stabbing him all kinds of places. That's why I called him Michael Myers because it looks like they stabbed him in the stomach, they stabbed him in the leg, they stabbed him mm-hmm. all kinds of places, and yeah. then they yell at Scott. Man, chop his ass. So Scott picks up the axe and at the, the atch. The atch. <laughs> he picks up the axe and goes to swing this thing. What it does, it shows the screen flash. It goes dark, comes back. Kareem dead with an axe in his chest. So yep. off screen, unfortunately, doesn't count. No. Nope. But like I said, the blood effects are good. But then the plot thickens. Yeah. This is where shit takes the turn for the real. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, Scott looks up and has this shitty look on his face and it starts getting this shit eating grin on his face. And you're like, uh, huh? I mm-hmm. knew it. So anyway, what turns out happening is Scott was the little boy. We finally find out whose parents were killed the night they were playing that stupid ass game. And he's been plotting this shit for years, apparently to take yeah. all these fools out. So it wasn't Rutger. I was disappointed in that because I thought he'd be the killer, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. he not. Of course, he hadn't even been in the movie in an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it turns. I'm thinking this guy, this with Scott, is like his brother or something like that. I don't know for sure. Or yeah, just some, 
We're unsure at this point because we don't because he he helps them up, but we don't see his face. Yes, you don't see shit. But that's what's cool about it. I'm glad that they had a twist. Then again, mm -hmm. as most movies are, sort of predictable. Because once we saw the fact that he had killed uh, Kareem by accident, or what we thought was an On accident, purpose. yeah, we're like, nah, because that other dude was wide open for a shot. So he took his ass out. So then uh, Marcus takes off. And uh, also, while, while this is all happening, also, um, the Karina, the other blonde, uh, makes it into the security uh, the security room where where the all the ma Marcus, monitors are. Marcus fool. <laughs> what? I said Marcus fool. What about him? You said Kareem. Kareem dead. No, sorry, Karina. <laughs> Karina. You I didn't say no, Kareem, motherfucker. Say... I said Karina, <laughs> deaf motherfucker. <laughs> No, Go on, Karina fool. goes into the into the the um into the monitor room, and so she's she's seen all this happen, and then mm -hmm. Marcus eventually makes his way into the monitor room with her. Yep, and everybody in everybody in the house dead except those two, and now Scott, and what we thought was the brother, right, or, or whatever the hell he was. Also, there uh, we didn't mention they have a, a gay best friend part of the group. He at some point left um, to go hook up with somebody. But then Scott sends him a text telling, saying somebody's kill all his friends, come back to the house. Um, and he does come back to the house and then gets shanked really fast. But yeah, he does get shanked and he does get shanked on screen. So I guess that would count once you think. Kill five. Yeah, he does get shanked all on right. screen. So there we go. Yeah, we got five on screen kills. So this is yeah, where. So this is where what we like to call the exposition dump happens. Yeah. Scott is now trapped them in the viewing room. He's in there mm -hmm. with them. And he gives them the entire speech. And this is why we find out he's the kid whose parents were killed. And he's been plotting on that ass for 10 years. And yep. he's going to get his whether he like it or not. So during the process of his little speech... His boy walks in, the big motherfucker mm -hmm. that they shanked the shit out of. And you're like, what the hell? And, you know, because you thought he was dead at least or crippled. Didn't work. But what what I didn't get here, first of all, they didn't really introduce or tell us who this guy even is, to be honest with you. I don't even think it mm -hmm. explained who this guy was. But he's standing he there talking, and he takes a knife on his own boy and stabs him in the eye socket with it. I mean, just yeah. hits him right in the face with this knife and drops him. And you're thinking, mm -hmm. what the? I mean, because he's been helping him kill all these fools. So I don't get why he did that. But doesn't matter anyway. So, so, what, <laughs> so what he explains is, so the guy takes off his hood. And he's, he's, he's this really tall, long, long-haired, like, rough dude. Yeah. And uh, Scott explains that he, this guy was his friend inside inside the insane asylum. And they became really oh, good friends. Oh, that's right. That's and so right. He, Crazy he, boy. Enacted him, mm -hmm, he enacted him to help out with his, his plot. Which, okay, I want to say I absolutely love because one thing I always wanted from a horror movie where uh, there was a, a mask killer, which I guess is kind of why, like, um, <clears throat> I mean, with the exception of like you know, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, that kind of thing, but I always, I always wanted the killer to be someone that had nothing to do with the entire cast. Yep. Or story because that, like, that that gets old as fuck you're right about it does. that you, and to me like the i like to me the idea that like say a serial killer in like a, a town or something yeah. the idea that it might be a drifter instead of someone who lives there to me is even scarier because there's less likely the guy's gonna get caught hell yeah and so the fact that at the and it might some people might think it's dumb in, in third act to bring this whole new character in that we never fucking heard of and maybe it is but i like the fact that we don't know who this dude is, and it's just to be some random killer from an insane asylum, and it's not yep. he's not at all connected to any of the characters. I think that was a great plot point. Um I also think that uh Scott stabbing the knife in him was was dumb though. There's like you said, there's no reason to do that because he was helping him Well, he said no more loose ends, and so apparently the guy was a loose end because he can identify Scott as the killer. But he didn't talk. <laughs> no, still, yeah, that, yeah. Again, you know, plot holes, whatever. Who knows, whatever, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so then what happens is they get in a scuffle. Marcus starts to beat the living shit out of Scott, gets the better of him, gets the knife out of his hand, starts beating the living shit out of him, 
And then out of nowhere, you know, Doc Howarday, as I called him, because he comes in there wearing a damn black hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Walks in and doesn't even ask any questions. He just comes in and smokes Marcus because he's picking up an axe and he's getting ready to kill the killer. And then old Rutger, you know, puts about 10 slugs in his ass, mm-hmm. which is sorry. You know, that's that sucks. And then you think the killer killer's dead. You have no idea what's going on. The bitch is dead. Everybody dead. <laughs> they lean down to talk to him, you know, and lean down to check on him. And then, as I call it, the killer's ki- the killed killer kills the cop. <laughs> that's <a laughs> that's what I call it. That, that's what I say. He, so the uh, you know Michael Meyer retired strong dude stands up out of nowhere, swings mm-hmm. an axe at Rutger's head, but you never see it. Nope. And end of movie. End of movie. It cuts out. So, that being said, my friend, what is your analysis of this fine motion picture? Well, first of all, as I said before, <clears throat> there's no reason to call it to put it under the banner of Flavor Flav's Night Tales at all. <laughs> Just remove that shit. That right there. Yeah, boy. I mean, if he had to at least mentioned the name of the movie or, you know, did some sort of crypt keeper ish type intro where he talked about what was going to go on or whatever, then that would have been better. But he didn't. He literally was there for 30 seconds to pick up a paycheck and that was it. Yep. Um, as I said, the beginning, the first hour or so is is boring as shit. I hate I hate the kills at the beginning because they're all off screen. Uh oh, the fact that anytime you look this movie up, whether it's on the cover or the Wikipedia or the IMDB, they have it right there based on true events. But I did some research. I couldn't find a single fucking instance of what this was supposedly based off of. That's what they use the weasel word based. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all all so, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. It may have been based on a, an ax killer who killed a bunch of people that had nothing to do with the fucking phone calls or some shit. I don't know, but yep. that's bullshit. Uh, but then as we mentioned, <laughs> once we get to the first really good kill with a head chop at that point on, the movie gets, you know, much better. Much faster paced as well. You know, shit starts to happen. Like, before all that, I was not at all invested in anything that was fucking going on. Then, after that, I started getting more invested in it. And then, then when they, they, uh, you know, the realization came with who the killers were, I thought, okay, that was pretty cool. Then the ending was stupid as shit. Um... I thought that was dumb as hell that the cop just bust in and instead of saying freeze or whatever, he see just shot first, ask questions later. It's a real Texas thing to do right there. That's bullshit. Um, you know, and so uh, so we're 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 left with the idea that Scott got off scot free. Yep. And but um bump. Yeah, thank you. Uh and, and also the killer. Now, we also don't know what happened afterward because as you said, the killer the killer killer got up and attempted to kill the cops. So after he killed the cops, was he going to kill Scott for turning on him? We don't I know. I would have. I'd have put an axe, I would have through, too. His, I'd have put an axe yeah. through his gizzard, but we don't get yeah. to see none of that. Yeah. Again, some of the sound design was stupid as shit, the whole axe on the, the carpet part. <laughs> the fact that this, that even though this dude was an, an insane prisoner, he was somehow able to heal. He, uh, he was somehow able to hear somebody um, breathing real low. This is why. A, a, this through folks, a cabinet. And through fucking uh, a hood. Makes no fucking sense. <laughs> That's but, why I can't help it, man. That's why I love doing this with you, because you're a one anal motherfucker when it comes to this <laughs> shit. That's hilarious. I mean, I'm sure I get I get too uh, detailed with what I expect from my shitty no! movies, apparently. No, it's awesome, man. It's freaking awesome. But I'm yeah, gonna, I'm wanting to glaze over this. You know, now wait a minute. No, what about this motherfucker with the knitting needles and the big shoes on? No, I mean, you just break down to some of the weirdest detail. I think that's awesome. Yeah, the the so the script was was the middle part again. That middle part of the script was okay. The rest of it was really unforget was really forgettable and just bland. The I will say it was shot very well. It looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the acting in the second half got really got much better. I don't want to say really good, but it got much better. Uh, cinematography was good. Um, I can't remember any of the fucking music, so it wasn't really any good music. Nope. Uh, again, the the weapon was fantastic. The axe was cool as shit. The Killer's outfit was forgettable, <laughs> but I, I would give this a one with the exception of the fact that it's almost two fucking hours 
and over an hour in before you get any really good kills. And at that point you have maybe 20, 25 minutes of good, good action. And then you get a disappointing ending. Um, and then the, 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 the little things that bother me as well. So I'm going to have to knock it down a couple of points for that. Uh, and that, and then, you know, you get only like less than 10 minutes of Rutger Hauer being, he's not, he's not even being a detective. He's a Rutger Hauer being Rutger Hauer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's not even playing a role. And so, uh, I'm going to give it a three, man. You're going to give it a three. Give I'm going to tell dude. you what, man, when you start breaking that down, I thought you was going to steal my thunder, but that's all right. For all right. me, for me, mm-hmm. I thought the acting, uh, considering the subject matter, which you would think, oh God, here we go, typical. I thought the acting wasn't that bad. Okay. Uh, I love the opening sequence, the screams mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Very realistic to me. Very okay. realistic. Uh, yes, there was a bunch of dead time and a bunch of unnecessary bullshit. I get yep. that. So mm-hmm. skipping to it, like I said, when the kills got rolling, man, this movie really entertained the shit out of me. I liked it. Uh, the script I thought was good. The story, not bad. The effects were awesome. I love the blood effects. Like I said, the weapon was a badass axe. That thing was, yeah, was. awesome. Really I loved it. Cool. The kills that we did get to see were well done. Um, good blood. Freaking awesome. I mean, usually yeah. this shit looks fake, but man, that's, that was awesome. So mm-hmm. I'm going to cut this and just say straight out, like you, if it wasn't for the long lulls of stupidity, mm-hmm. I didn't think the ending was that bad. It had some weird okay. twist to it and everything like that. Uh-huh. But like I said, once it started coming, it was great. But I'm going to go ahead and give this bad boy a two turd. I was going to go two. one, but problem is, like you said, too much boredom. You know, yeah. You know, you had some good action sequence at the beginning, lull, and then 30, about 30 minutes of really, really good shit, which kind of brought it up and it's worth it. So if you want to skip through the party crap and get to the killing, go for it. But yeah, I'm going to give that a solid two turds. I want to follow that up real quick with one word of advice. Okay. Don't prank call anyone. If you do, you need to use the you know the neighbor's phone because we're sorry, but your brain has been disconnected. You forgot to <laughs> dial star six seven, dumbass. You know, so you got to look out for that shit. So if you're gonna fuck with people, dial a star sixty seven. That's even not only you... that, but uh, everybody's gonna be calling from a cell phone nowadays, and <laughs> quite a few of the carriers have automatic. Um, what do you call it? Automatic. Uh, what's it called? A caller ID. I got caller ID. Yeah. So automatically. So you're pretty much you, you down. Did. And mm-hmm. ain't no, ain't no such thing as phone booze no more. No. Nope. Can't do it. But There's, that's it, man. That's barely it. Barely any landlines. But yeah, leave the leave the prank calls to the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, I I do want to say that um, again, that second half, uh, it it made the movie a bit more fun. And it actually made me really excited to talk about this movie with you for that reason, which hasn't happened in a while. Probably not, at least to me, not since the summoning, um, because the, the movies between that have been just so, I mean, uh, uh, lackluster that there's not anything to get excited about. But but once that first head came off on screen, sweet, I, I, got, <laughs> I got to see more of the axe and see how cool the axe was. And then that second head came off. I was like, all right, we got ourselves a movie, man. This is, all right, let's do this. Yeah. Yep. Now, so, like I said, because in the in the realm of shitty horror movies, we've done a lot more that are shitty, that are way shittier than this one was. But uh, yeah, this one actually had, unfortunately, some entertainment value. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I agree. Other than other than the stupidity that normally is involved with most of the movies we review, this was actually almost a legit horror movie. Right. You know, it was off the grid, of course. I'd never heard of it before, but it was actually almost too good for the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, very close almost. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, bud. Well, why don't you tell the folks at home where they can follow us, find us, and all that good stuff? Well, you ain't going to find my ass in no cupboard hiding from no damn axe killer. I'm going to tell you that. I'll be in the safe room. But what I will tell you, oh, she died in the safe room, though, man. You ain't, oh, you talking about the metal door? That, yeah, the metal door room. Yeah. I got one. you. Yeah. Fuck it. You should, they should have stayed in there, but they're stupid. Anyway. You can, of course, find us on Facebook, 
Twitter and Instagram. Just look under What Suck Podcast. You can find us on any platform that you go. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can also find us on Patreon.com, of course. Uh, search What to Suck. And we are also we also have a T Public site for merch if you're interested. Uh, just tpublic.com and also search What to Suck. We appreciate you riding along with us. You have a great night. It's it's fun to be doing with you again, brother. I look forward to the next movie, man. I can't wait to see what's what's going on. We got quite a bit left in this season, so I'm um, super stoked. Don't forget to check out, like I said, check out our Patreon. And uh, don't worry, we'll be having a really cool giveaway coming up pretty soon. Yes. In the meantime, uh, this is Chris, and I will see y'all at the next shit fest. And this is James, and if it ain't on what the suck, it ain't shit.